Hi, this is Peter Harris from CommercialPropertyAdvisors.com and co-author of this book, Commercial Real Estate Investing for Dummies, as well as coach and mentor to many investors across this great nation of ours. The subject and title of today's video is called The Five Best Commercial Real Estate Type for Individual Investors. So let's get started. The five best commercial real estate type for individual investors are apartments, self-storage, shopping centers, office buildings, and mobile home parks. And in each of those categories, we're going to discuss why we invest in them, the sweet spot, and the pros and cons of each. Okay, so let's start with apartments. Apartments are, in the commercial business, five units and greater. All right, a fourplex, a triplex, and a duplex is considered residential. Five and greater is commercial. I have personally seen apartment buildings as large as a thousand units and as small as five units all across the U.S. Why do we invest in apartments? Well, there are several reasons. First of all, everyone needs a place to live, so the demand is great. Next is cash flow. You can generate lots of cash flow in the apartment business. Next is forced appreciation. That's right, you can force the appreciation of your apartment investment by increasing the rents and reducing the expenses or a combination of the both. The net result is your, your improved bottom line will increase your property value. So you can force the appreciation. Next is uh, apartments produce great tax shelters. All right, they do. Um, and lastly, the apartments, as you make your mortgage payments, you're reducing your principal and you're, you're creating equity. So after a few years, you'll be amazed at the amount of wealth you create by reducing your, your equity, I'm sorry, by increasing your equity, increasing your cash flow, you'll be amazed at what you can create uh, there. Now, in my opinion, out of these five, the easiest to get into are apartments. And the most difficult to get into would be office buildings, which we will discuss in a couple of minutes. Okay, next is the sweet spot. What's the sweet spot in the apartment business? It is between 500,000 and 5 million. I personally don't do anything below 500,000. It just isn't worth the effort. Now, anything above 5, uh, 5 million um, I, I avoid as well, and I recommend as the individual you avoid as well because there's so much competition. At that level, you're playing against the big dogs, the large institutions, the, the trusts, and folks like that where we can't compete with. All right, um, so the sweet spot would be between 500,000 and 5 million. A con for the apartment business would be if if your neighborhood uh, developer is building or building new apartments. Now, uh, new builds can affect your ability to attract the best tenants. So that would be con, something to um, watch out. All right, and the other con I want to discuss briefly would be um, sometimes people would do bad deals. And that's, a, that's definitely a con. So I'm, I'm hoping that you will continue to watch these videos and learn how not to make those mistakes, okay? All right, next is uh, self-storage. Now, self-storage are commercial buildings with uh, individual rooms where people store their stuff. And the, uh, the rooms or the units can be as small as five by five or 10 foot by 30 foot long. And people store their stuff in there. They can also store on the outside their RVs um, and their boats. And you've probably seen these buildings as you drive along your freeway, they're the large um, single story or two story buildings where there's roll up doors um, all in a row. All right, okay, next is uh, why do we invest in self storage? Well, the self storage business is, is pretty much identical to the apartment business, but you're missing two things and it's to your advantage. So two things are you're missing tenants here and you're missing repair of toilets. So you're missing tenants, you're missing toilets here in the self-store business and people uh, love that. 
uh, self storage you can also create uh, lots of cash flow and as well as uh, force the appreciation now let's discuss the sweet spot for self storage I'm gonna keep this simple for you the sweet spot for for self storage is to buy a large enough self storage facility where you can employ a property manager okay so if you are a beginner do not try to manage this by yourself so buy a large enough self storage or sweet spot to uh, big enough to afford a property manager all right don't do this yourself all right um, next is the pros and cons of self storage compare this to apartments is it is not labor intensive or maintenance intensive meaning that there's no tenants so you have very few employees and also since there are no toilets and things to repair as much uh, is not uh, maintenance intensive as well as well the evictions in self storage are rather easy to do basically if someone doesn't pay or someone skips town you can actually take through things and sell it uh, for the rent to recoup um, your rent the uh, next self storage pro would be that um, uh, experts consider self storage to be recession proof and what I mean by that is during the economy when the economy is booming people buy extra things and want to store their extra things and when the economy is tanking people downsize and need to store their the things they bought previously so it can be a um, win-win Here's a con for self-storage. The con would be that if the uh, neighborhood uh, tanked or neighborhood has uh, decreased in value or, or it's going the wrong way, what can happen is it can make your self-storage facility not that desirable. Who wants to put um, their valuable things into a neighborhood where they don't feel comfortable driving to, much less um, storing? And so uh, in the self-storage business, Location, location, location is extremely important. The last um, con for self-storage is that it can take a while to fill up your self-storage to occupy all the units. In the apartment business, everyone needs a place to live. In the self-storage, not everyone needs storage. So be careful there. All right, next are, let's, we just discussed the apartments, self-storage, let's discuss shopping centers. Now. I'm going to group shopping centers into one category, if I may, and I'm going to say that shopping centers are strip centers, large or small, and let's include shopping malls indoors and outdoors. Okay, we're going to lump them all together. All right, why invest in shopping centers? Well, I would say stability. Stability is the word here. Did you know that in most shopping centers, the tenants sign a 5 to 20 year lease? that is long-term income that's a good thing all right also you want to make sure in your shopping centers that you are extremely selective in your in your tenant types what I mean by that is your tenant types are going to attract your foot traffic foot traffic is going to, is going to bring people to your shopping centers to use the um, or to shop at the stores and that's going to create uh, value for uh, the, sh the shopping center and its owners and they will stay there long term and do well now what you also want to do is make sure that you pay attention to your uh, your tenant mix you want to make sure that that each tenant complements the other in other words that uh, you you complement the foot traffic for each uh, different tenant now for shopping centers a a great tenant that would be in great uh, foot traffic would be for example a grocery uh, chain a large grocery chain that's great another one would be a, uh, a, a chain pharmacy like a CVS or Walgreens or Rite Aid will be there they will generate foot traffic for years to come again the uh, sweet spot for shopping centers I would say as an individual type just beginning buy small start small and then scale up because the the con for shopping centers is that it is capital intensive meaning that you need lots of cash and what can happen is in your shopping center if let's say for example your anchor tenant your your uh, your grocery store tenant moves out 
they can take they can take with them over as much as 25 to 30 percent of the income. In the meantime, if they leave, you're going to have to be paying the mortgage insurance and taxes while they're gone and while you're building up the place for the next tenant. So you need cash to hold on to this. All right. Um, next, let's focus on office buildings. All right. So we covered apartments, self-storage, shopping centers, office buildings. Now, office buildings could be a single uh, building with one tenant all the way up to a skyscraper that's uh, 80 floors and dozens of tenants. So, uh, so from a single all the way up to a skyscraper. All right. Why, why do we invest in office buildings? Well, when the economy is booming, the rents can be astronomical. They really can. I personally seen office building investors and owners make tens of millions of dollars, if not hundreds of millions of dollars, by holding on to their office building for long term, uh, eight to ten years. I've seen it. All right. The sweet spot for office buildings, again, start small, buy an office building with uh, multiple tenants with long-term leases. All right. Next is the, um, the con for office building would be office buildings tend to follow the economy. So as the economy goes up, your office building performance goes up. As the economy goes down, your office building performance tends to trail and it goes down as well. So you have to make sure that um, that you follow the economy, you pay attention to the economy cycle as you own your office building. All right. Now, um, one thing in office building is one thing I would avoid. I would avoid uh, buying a luxury class A office building. And the reason why is, again, this is something that the big dogs, the large institutions, the REITs, uh, all these uh, big players go after the Class A lecture buildings and they're overpriced because those guys will pay for that. And as individual investors, we have to pay attention to our returns, which should be um, higher than what those guys want. Okay? All right. Lastly are mobile home parks. Now, mobile home parks get a bad rap. And over the years they have and just doesn't deserve it. All right? So here are two situations for mobile home park investors. The first situation is you own the mobile home park and what you do is you rent to a person who has a mobile home and they put the mobile home on the lot and they pay you lot rent or you're just renting out the dirt. The second situation is you own the, the lot, the, the park and the home and you rent um, both of them to them. We prefer and the experts prefer that um, you, you have the mobile home park and you rent out just the dirt. And the reason why is to make sure that you're only paying to maintain the dirt and the surroundings and not the home. Uh, mobile, mobile homes can deteriorate very quickly and you don't want to get into the, the business that way. If you're going to uh, buy a mobile home park with lots of homes and take care of them, you might as well do apartments, right? Because the rents are much greater and you have a, a, an, a, an efficiency there. All right. Um, next is, why, why do people invest in mobile home parks? Well, they invest in, in them be, not because they're pretty, but because they produce cash flow. So mobile home parks are a cash flow vehicle. Next is, what's the sweet spot? Again, I'm going to keep it easy for you. The sweet spot, the sweet spot should be buy a mobile home park that is big enough to employ a property manager. Now, um, if you want to manage it yourself, I still recommend you hire a management company or a manager, put them on site, learn from them, and later on, if you want to do it yourself, you can let them go and take over yourself. But if you are just starting out, highly recommend you buy a, a, a mobile home park big enough to employ a property manager. Now, Let's discuss pros and cons mobile home parks. All right, the pros are uh, the demand for, mo from, for mobile home parks. All right, uh, affordable housing demand in this country is great and will continue to great, do great. Now, did you know that uh, over the next 20 years, there will be 10,000 baby boomers retiring each, each day? That's right, over the next 20 years. So the demand for affordable housing 
Um, there's just not enough supply. There was going to be a limited supply of mobile home parks in the city because city governments don't want brand new mobile home parks. They want brand new off, brand new um, apartment buildings. They want brand new sub stores. They want brand new shopping centers. They want brand new office buildings, not mobile home parks. So mobile home parks are um, good to have because you won't be building any more um, new ones. Next is uh, a pro for mobile home park would be tenants tend to stay a long time. And that's because it's rather difficult, complex, and costly to move their home from one park to another or from one city to another. So they tend to stay a long time. All right, next are cons for mobile home parks. The first con would be mobile home parks do have a negative reputation. They just do. It's, uh, I believe, is not deserved, but let's face it, they do. The, um, the next con would be uh, financing for mobile home parks. Uh, banks will prefer to lend on something that they can see, touch, and feel. So banks tend not to want to uh, lend to mobile home parks, all right, because of that. Because banks are, uh, they're seeing mobile home parks as uh, lending on dirt. And again, they would prefer to, to lend on something they can see, touch, and feel. That means that if you were to get a loan in a mobile home park, the interest rates would be rather high compared to the rest of these, and the down payments rather high compared to the rest of these. But there's a silver lining, and the silver lining is uh, because of the bank situations here, the lending situations, most mobile home, mobile home park transactions are seller financed. That means that the, you can creatively finance uh, mobile home parks. So now we finish discussing apartments, self-storage, shopping centers, office building, mobile home parks. I'm going to leave you with two nuggets. The first nugget is I want you to focus, all right? And what I mean by focus is as an individual investor, I want you to focus either on one of these. At the beginning, not on all of them. The acronym I have for FOCUS is follow one course until successful, all right? In my experience, I have never seen a really, really good apartment operator who also owns self-storage shopping centers and office buildings. The, the best investors I've seen, they FOCUS, all right? Number, number one. Number two is uh, as you jump into this business, all right, I want you to uh, uh, weigh the profitability and the size of the investment. For example, if you have, if you're considering a five unit or a hundred unit, I want you to consider the profitability and the size of each because the amount of time and effort it takes to buy a five unit or a hundred unit is, will be just about the same. Okay, so that concludes uh, this video on the five best commercial real estate types for individual investors. If you want more videos like this, go on to commercialpropertyadvisors.com or simply subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great day, and I'll see you later.